Cheech here with Fly Fish Food. We're going to show you one of the highest floating hoppers we've fished in recent history and a way to tie in rubber legs under a parachute hackle. Okay, so Lance has the tubular hopper. It's a great pattern, but I can't fish it because it's Lance's and I don't do that, okay? So I kind of was messing around on the vise tied up this bad boy and fished it and it fished great. It fished phenomenal from the boat, it mended well, it skated well. So we're going to show you how to do this. It's a great fly for a fish to eat it and to hang droppers from. Alright, so I posted a picture of this fly on Instagram and I called it Hopper Sin Nombre. In Spanish it means hopper without a name. And uh, so I posted that. Brian Feeney commented and said that's a Wienermobile hopper. And it is. It's perfect name for this fly and you'll see why as we tie it. Alright, now we're to the part we are going to prepare the foam. So, I love the bionic ant bodies. There's something about a, a round foam body that just makes your fly land correctly every time. But look how small they are. They're small like Lance. We don't need that. What I want is to be able to tie a big thick foam body like this or like this or like this so and in comes the gunbill foam cutters okay so that that doesn't really tell you much about it right here it's just a bunch of cylinders well the way that it's used is you stick it in a drill and yes I only work on house projects like once a year so that's why I can have Ryobi products don't yell at me I know Milwaukee's are good okay I know that the other stuff is good this works for Cheech alright so you know comment below tell me how dumb I am for having Ryobi I don't care alright so what I've done and you'll see in our foam gluing video that I've glued a plain block of the Wapsi foam with a piece of three millimeter foam on top Okay, now these foam cylinders, you can either glue the foam on the top of them or on, or I mean, on, on the long side or the short side. And I guess not all of them are created equally. This one's a little longer than the other. But that gives me plenty of room or plenty of foam to tie with if I do it this way. Okay, so I'm not even sure what size this bit is here, um, but I just stuck it in there. This is about the size that I want to tie for a size 10. The best way as you can see is I tie, I cut out a whole bunch of uh, sizes and I just started tying with them to see which one worked best. So the key the key here is that you have your your drill and you barely stick the cutter in just right in the end of the bit because you need enough bit to get through this. Can you see that? Like that and the other thing is you need some soapy water so if you don't have a Yeti cup from Renzetti that has your name on it probably won't work but you're just gonna take your bit and you're gonna put it in the water a little bit and that's just gonna serve as lubrication so you don't burn up the foam so I've got my and we're gonna try to do this so you can see it but I've got my foam piece uh, ready to go I've got my bit and I'm just going to come in here and drill straight down. I'm going to put my finger, my thumb goes right under it. It's kind of awkward for the camera, but that's what we do for you guys because we love you. So I'm just going to drill down. Don't go too fast or the foam won't be uh, very smooth. And then I start to feel it with my thumb coming through. Um, on some of these, if you just pull it back out right now, then it won't come out inside the tube. But what I found with this foam, it's so dense that when I drill through it, the foam wants to spit out of the actual bit because of the air pressure that's built up. So you just grab it, boom. Now I have my cylinder. So, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Just buffing my Renzetti. It's a good way to clean your vice, but as you can see, 
you can do it in a bunch of really cool colors like tan and yellow or the secret to bionic ants in bigger sizes or even filthy pink and yellow okay so we have a Daiichi 1710 in the hook in the vise you can use a TMCO 5263 as well those are the hooks that I, I highly recommend for this one but you want a 2x long hook that is not necessarily a dry fly hook the heavier hook will help this fly land correctly every single time and that's one of the keys with this fly it lands correctly every single time and you'll see that as I tie in the, the body at the very first one I tie in and the tail pokes up and then at the end you'll see how I whip finish the head um, and to, to make it kind of poke up as well but anyway real simple I'm gonna dress the hook with thread and then I'm gonna take this body and I want the the head to go about that far off of the uh, the front of the the hook and then the back of it I want it to be maybe a half or a third of the length of the body to, to poke out the end so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that right now now if you've got a trusty exacto blade you can make a slit so I'm gonna make a slit in this foam that's roughly the length of where I have my thread on this hook so I don't want it to go too far back I don't want it to go all the way through the colored foam um, and another thing I have fished this caught many many fish on it and the glue that we use you know obviously you'll you'll see the gluing of the foam video if you click on the description below but you will see how to glue these together so it's the most durable uh, foam glue job that you'll ever use all right so enough of that I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut about halfway into the body with this knife I'm not gonna show it to you because we could be held uh, liable if someone cuts themselves or maybe we just don't want to set up the camera at that angle right now okay so you can see where this slit is it's just about the same length as the thread that I have on there so I'm going to test it see if it rides nice it does so once I have it here I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut an angle down to that slit that I made just like that and you can leave it just like that or you can unharsh the edges just like that so anyway I'm gonna put that back on the hook and I'm gonna start by just making some wraps by the way I'm using a 140 denier thread um, so that I can compress the foam without it breaking and then Curtis has to bleep it out me and I get in trouble because I swear so I'm just gonna turn maybe three or four wraps forward tie that down Got a little hair coming out here go forward again make a few more turns so that's a pretty clean little body um, and then my last one I'm gonna go all the way up to the head and I'm going to tie that down and now I'm going to cover that last bulb up with thread now the cool thing about this is it'll sit like that it won't rotate around the hook at all and you don't necessarily even need to use super glue on this body it's just super durable just like that um, okay so from here I'm going to tie in a parachute post and I'm going to do that out of EP Trigger Point white. They finally have just a plain white that we can get. Uh, I think the other one was like spinner wing white. It was like a UV bluish hue to it. So we're going to cut off a healthy amount. Now, 
you can see that the head and the tail both go upward and it can be kind of a pain to tie this parachute hackle in. So I'll show you some things you can do to maybe make that easier um, but just know that it, it will kind of be a pain. So I'm going to tie that in just like that and then I'm going to parachute post it up. One thing that helps a lot if I can do it is to shorten the thread on your bobbin quite a bit. And I'm trying to film this. It's a lot easier to do and I'm not thinking about what to say. All right. So if you kind of back off your tension until you can hold on to it with your fingers and then tighten it, that's probably the easiest way to get this post tied. All right. So post is posted. And I'm going to just kind of do a preliminary trim right there mostly to get it out of the way. The next step is to find a hackle that is appropriate to size and some of the things you can do is like uh, I've used Coachman on this guy. This is a tan one um, and I think this is a Grizzly or a variant on this one so pick your favorite color of hackle on this, one, on this fly. I obviously have chosen Coachman Brown because of its magical translucent powers. So I'm going to strip some of the, the stem and tie this in so that the shiny side is facing me on the on my side of the hook. And that what I just did might take you a few tries and a lot of swearing but if you do like six of these flies you'll get it. Okay so now we're going to tie in some rubber legs underneath this parachute. So as you know the rubber legs stick out they're kind of a, a pain in the butt to tie in with a parachute hackle but you kind of have to just force yourself to do it. But I'll show you the technique I use. Um, when I say rubber legs this hairline life flex has been awesome to work with lately. It's like a span flex but straight. Look at that. Look how shiny it is. Yes. I'm going to do that again. Put it to music, Curtis. All right. All right. So the other thing that's cool about this one is I never have used bruiser blend on a dry fly. So this fly is definitely worthy of some Sasquatch Brown Bruiser Blend Jr. So what I'm going to do before I tie those legs in is I'm going to put some dubbing on behind the parachute and maybe a little bit in front of it because it's pain to wrap dubbing behind a crisscross rubber leg. The cool thing about Bruiser Blend is you can kind of wrap it on top of itself and it will just kind of compact down. So there we go, Sasquatch Brown in the house. All right, so I'm gonna tie these legs in just by making a loop like this and tying them both in. At the same time, looks real messy until, boom, look at that. Just wiggling the legs from one side to the other and I'm gonna wrap those legs back to the dubbing ball that I just carefully tied in and now I'm going to get more dubbing and dub that bare spot. The cool thing about Bruiser Blend is it's all synthetic so it's not going to absorb water and if you use a good floatant it, it really takes floatant well. I was very impressed with it and I'm going to start using it on more of my big foam dries. So on this part I'm going to start from the front and wrap back to my parachute now. So that way I'm not ever having to get into that drama zone of where the legs crisscross. So once I'm done with that, instead of 
letting my thread hang at the front of that dubbing, I'm actually going to do one turn of thread around the base of the parachute post. And there we go. So as you can see, I've left the front legs in a loop. I'm going to leave them like that until the parachute's wrapped. It kind of keeps them out of the way. And then if I leave these legs a little longer, they'll kind of hang down out of the way. So when you're wrapping your parachute, it's not as much of a pain in the butt. So from here, I'll start wrapping my parachute post. And again, it's easiest if you kind of grab on to the parachute as you're putting tension on it at least for the first few wraps and then start working the parachute underneath itself and as you can see I'm having to pull the parachute back when I wrap it in the front and forward when I'm in the back and you should be able to just kind of dig that parachute down under itself and create a nice thick parachute and the true test of how how thick the parachute should be is like if you if you turn it upside down and look at it from the bottom side as you can see that's a that's a pretty awesome profile right there okay so once you've got your hackle wrapped you're just going to take this thread and wrap it between the hackle and the body just like that pretty tight and that is easier said than done when you're dealing with a fly with rubber legs and foam that, that pokes up. So as you can see the hackle, I mean the parachute hackle is definitely maybe not insta hero worthy. So I probably will have to tie a better one for our insta hero account. But that is the profile that you're looking for, the bottom side. So I'm going to take the hackle trim it off and now I need to find a bodkin all right we're not quite done yet but we need to glue the the hackle so I have a little tiny bit of super glue on here I'm gonna jam that bodkin between the body and the hackle and that glue will seep into where I tied off and now I'll be able to come in here with my scissors and trim off that thread also, um, I like the post about like that. And then with the legs, I'm going to trim those. Um, the back leg I like to be equal to where the bend of the hook is. If you tie in the legs longer than that, they'll hang up under the hook and kind of get fouled up. You have to fix them all the time. Then you push the other two forward and that way the front two are shorter than the back two and that's the cool hoppery profile you're looking for um, it fishes great now the other thing about this body that's super cool is the way that the head is angled upward um, will help this fly kind of sit down um, so when you when you mend the fly the head if you do it right just like it is here It will kind of push water and keep the fly up as opposed to get pulled under the water. So That's the fly Curtis has shrunk me by now. So I might as well just say goodbye <music>